I think it is three o'clock and that we should get to paint. This is what it looks like done. Yours will look much nicer, I'm sure. And let's go and work on our piece. This. So yeah. we're going to work on the pumpkin first. So you're going to need summer squash, country red, and burnt umber. If you used a different yellow, like if you use moon yellow or golden straw or whatever you had yellow wise, and they're just use that color. But um, I use summer squash because I was totally out of golden straw. So we are going to dry brush some highlighting on our guy first. Get a little closer. And just like uh, when I paint other pumpkins on wood or whatever else, we are going to dry brush highlighting through the centers of each of those three sections. Get your brush ready to dry brush. Again, I use the Langnickel Short Round Sable, and I do have brushes back in stock on my website in case you were looking for some. And we are going to dry brush highlighting down the center of each section. And I kind of like this on fabric because it has a little more texture. So just a nice wide dry brushed highlight down each section. Of course, you're not going to go through the glasses or the eyes or anything like that. This you don't add water to because it's a dry brush. Don't forget above his little nose. Now he kind of looks like he has a yellow mustache. When you get under these all these lights so that you guys can see it gets a little warm so i may scoot and turn a fan on so if you hear a humming in the background it's just my fan okay when you get done with that don't wash out your brush um we're gonna go ahead and dry brush some highlighting on this on these glasses and so I'm going to do that through the center so top and bottom through the center and that's with summer squash also so we'll be one step ahead when it comes to the glasses and you want to go through the center on you want to go in this little end here and down the side and down the center here dry brush as much as you can on those glasses basically okay you're going to need your country red and your burnt umber we're going to float some shading on our pumpkin and here again you can load your brush with fabric painting medium or just a side load and float with water like you usually do okay so country red first just a side load float and you're going to float on the outside sections next to the center section that includes inside the glasses so don't forget to get a little uh, shading in there And this is the way I always do pumpkins. I always float uh, some kind of red first. So I'm going to turn my guy around so it's a little bit easier. I'm going to do on the other side section next to the center. Going to go inside the glass area where you can see the section. I'm going to go around the glasses with Country Red. So all the way around the glasses. 
inside and out. I'm just using water this time for my floats. So I'm going all the way around those glasses up above his nose. That just makes him stand out off his face a little bit. Okay, I am going to do inside those glasses with a float of country red. Okay, we, we're going to do some more country red shading, but before we do that, I want us to go back to our yellow and float a highlight down the outside edges and down the outside edges of that center section. So down this outside edge, and don't panic because it'll dry and tone down a little bit. I'm just going to float the yellow down the outside edges and then down the outside edges of that center section. Don't forget inside the glasses you want to get a float in there it's going to blend a little bit with your red but that's okay that's looking a little more pumpkin-y again I'm going to turn my guy over So I could get this outside edge. And then I'm going to do this center. Oops, I'll get down a little bit. And getting inside that eyeglass. We are going to go back to our country red and float a little bit more shading. And that's going to be along the top. Treat each section as its own section though. So I'm going to start down the side a little bit. And yes, it goes over a little bit of a highlight. But I'm going to float some country red in the top of each section. Okay. 
and I'm going to float some country red along the bottom of each section. So in this one, I'm going to start a little ways up the side of that curve and float and kind of fill up that little V area right there with red. The same thing in the center. I'm going to start up the side a little bit and then come around the bottom. And that just helps to give it a little bit more uh, roundness and a little bit more uh, pumpkin shape. Because, you know, this is a te technically correct pumpkin, right? So, again, I'm going to walk the color out in that V area a little bit on the other side and pull that float up the side a little bit all right now wherever you floated country red you're going to go back and float with burnt umber and yeah it's going to blend into your country red a little bit that's okay so i'm going to do on the outside outside of the middle section on the side sections wherever you floated country red I'm going to turn this around and do the other side on the side section next to the center section. And I'm going to go around the glasses again inside and out To reload that brush quite often it takes a little bit more moisture to do these floats on fabric I'm going to do inside the glasses.
you're also going to do those tops and the bottoms just like you did before with the burnt umber where you painted country red you're going to do burnt umber across the top and the bottom again Now he looks like a dirty pumpkin, right? Just out of the pumpkin patch. And I'll do the bottom. So let's work on the face now. Let me get back over here and give you the paint colors. Some of them you'll already have on the um, on your palette, as such as the yellow. But you're going to need turquoise blue, lamp black, and warm white in addition to your yellow. And we're going to be working on his eyes, his nose, and his mouth. So we're going to dry brush again. Should have did this when we were dry brushing earlier, but I didn't catch it. So we're going to dry brush some of the yellow into the top of each of his facial features. So I'm just going to go add a little yellow in the top, say, half of each of those facial features. Including the mouth. And the mouth is basically just going to go through the center of the mouth. But in the eyes and nose you want to keep it in the top half. You're going to take a liner brush or a round brush. And what we're going to do is we are going to, what I say, line the cut edge of each of those facial features with the yellow. So you just take your uh, liner brush and kind of flatten it out so it's not pointy, but it has a flat um, tip and you just line on the eyes you're going to go the left side and across the bottom the nose left side and across the bottom and on the um, mouth you're going to go across the bottom and then you're going on top of the tooth and on the right side of the tooth so we're just going to give it like it has cut edges Add a little water to your paint so it doesn't skip so much. So I'm doing left side and across the bottom in the eyes. Left side and across the bottom in the nose. And across the bottom in the mouth, including that other side, across the top of the tooth and down the right side of the tooth. Easy peasy. So you're going to take your uh, flat brush, corner load into turquoise, and you're going to do a C-stroke float in the bottom of the black part of each of those eyes. 
both of them, each of them. So just a nice little C stroke float in those eyes. With turquoise blue, sorry. I didn't say that, did I? So turquoise blue C stroke float in the bottom of each eye. And then with lamp black, you're gonna give him a pupil. And it's kind of right in the center of his eyes. And it's not tiny. It's a nice, a nice size oval in the center of each eye of lamp black. We are going to add some highlights in the eyes, in the nose and the mouth. And so there are just dots or little ovals or set downs in the top right on each pupil. And then a little comma stroke looking thing in the right side of the nose and the right side of the mouth. And that's with warm white. Again, add a little water when you're doing those strokes so that it um, flows a little easier. So I'm just going to set down a warm white highlight in that eye. And yes, it's still wet, but it'll be okay. And then I'm going to line or paint a little stroke highlight up the right side of the nose and in the right side of the mouth. All right, his little face is done. The glasses, we're going to work on the glasses next. We've already um, dry brushed them with um, how's, I mean, with our yellow. So now we're going to need Hauser dark green, lavender, and we all already have warm white on there. So we need our yellow. We need Hauser dark green, lavender, and our warm white. We're going to put dots on our, uh, glasses. So you're going to want to make sure you keep your hands out of them or the easiest way would be to paint the dots instead of dotting them. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, float some shading on our glasses on the frames with Hauser Dark Green. And I'm going to go down the sides and across the top with Hauser Dark Green. So keep your hands out of his eyes, too. So I'm going to go down the sides. Both sides here. And I'm going to go across the top. And I'm going to go um, on the frame above his nose and I'm going to take it down the, the center, the inside side and just a little bit across the bottom. So I, I started up a, at the center above his nose and I took it down that inside edge and just a hair across the bottom. Doesn't have to go all the way across. And so we're going to add those dots with lavender. Now you can dot them with the back of a brush or something, or you can paint them with your liner brush, but they are painted on with lavender. And just a warning, we do put a highlight on each dot, so don't get too carried away. So what I like to do is go in the corners and then one in the center. 
See, these are going to dry much quicker than if I dotted them with a brush. And then I, I put one in the center of the frame above each eye. Just kind of space them out a little bit. It helps. Then I'll do one in between each of those. He needed some um, blingy type glasses. If you wanted to, you could put little jewels on there or dab a bit of sparkle paint on there. In the bottom, under the eyes, I did two, like inside and outside edge, and then spaced, uh, I think I'm going to just put two instead of three, and just spaced them up around the side edges. Maybe one here. So just give yourself some dots on the frames with lavender. I can't wait to see these when you get done with them. Always appreciate it when you post a picture of your piece online. Each of those dots gets a warm white highlight. Can't say I didn't warn you. So you just want to set down your brush. The dots that are on the left side of the frame are going to get their highlight on the left side. And the ones on the right side are going to get it on the right side. So don't have to make it a career. Just add a little highlight dot on each one of those Lavender dots in the middle one you can decide which side you want it to go on We get to go work on candy now we're gonna work on this large purple sucker so a new color you're going to need is wisteria, grape juice, and burnt orange. We haven't put out burnt orange yet. So wisteria, if you don't have wisteria, you can just lighten up your lavender a little bit. And grape juice and burnt orange. And I'm going to get a little tighter on this. That way if I do smear my dots, you won't see it. We are going to dry brush highlighting in the left side of this sucker with wisteria. And don't wash your brush out because we'll dry brush brighter. We're going to go ahead and dry brush highlighting in the left side of that purple sucker also. So anything that's purple is going to get a wisteria dry brushed in the right side. I mean left side. So it's like the, the, follow the shape of the sucker kind of, it's like a crescent shaped highlight. And in this purple sucker over here, it's just the left side. Don't forget the little, called the base of the sucker there. So you're just going to pick up warm white and you're going to dry brush a little bit brighter highlight, but that's going to stay more in the top area and it's not going to go down as far a smaller area it's lighter so it's going to cover a smaller area so just pick up warm white on that dirty brush and dry brush a little bit brighter highlight in the top left 
So okay. we are going to line the spiral shape onto our sucker with thinned grape juice. So lots of water in that grape juice. Think like one of those suckers your mom and dad used to used to beg your mom and dad to buy you when you'd go to the fair or Disneyland or um, not Sperry Farm. Those are all things out here in California. So that's where I would wine for them. So I'm just going to line that spiral. around that sucker. I always feel like I'm talking about somebody I don't like. And that's just going to help us to know where to put our stripes on there. So there are stripes on that spiral. I'm trying to keep my painted one not in. But there are stripes on that spiral with burnt orange. And they're kind of curved like you would do a candy cane. You think of those spirals, they're, they're round. They're rounded. So you want to make that stripe with burnt orange kind of curved so it gives the the look that it's um, rounded not that it's just flat so I could start I'm start out here on the outside edge and I'm just gonna give it some little stripes now keep in mind again each one of these little stripes is going to get a highlight on it just so you know You'll get really good at this so that you can do it again on the orange sucker. And my dots are dry so I can drag my hand wherever I want now. I don't have to worry about smudging anything. I'm just going to go around the spiral and add those little burnt orange stripes. I haven't had one of these suckers in a long time. It's probably a good thing. Even the teeny tiny ones are going to get just a little dot of a highlight. And then as they get bigger, the highlight will get a little bit bigger. Doesn't have to cover the whole stripe just through the center. This won't take as long because you already know where the stripes are. are going to let those stripes dry before we um, do some shading on there. So we're going to go to the candy sticks next to it. And they have 
you want to get out some Irish moss, but they have some thicker stripes, again, curved with Irish moss, and then some thin stripes of burnt orange above each Irish moss stripe. So you want to get out some Irish moss. We're jumping ahead a little bit. But you just want to let that purple sucker dry a little bit. So we're just going to draw, um, again, flatten out the, the uh, tip of that liner brush so you can get a wider stripe. And just add some curved stripes with Irish moss on that candy stick, or all three of them, actually. Okay, so let's add those little thin orange stripes above each green stripe. We're going to line a highlight on the orange stripes and the green stripes through the, in the center area with that yellow. So just a quick little spot of yellow in the center of each stripe, orange and green. Almost stuck my paintbrush in the green again. I think we can go back to our purple sucker now. And we can float shading in the right side of that purple sucker. And we'll go ahead and float shading on the other pur smaller purple sucker. But that's with grape juice. So just a side load float of grape juice shading in the right side of that sucker. And then also in the right side of that smaller su sucker. Boy, I'm having trouble saying that word sucker when I'm using it about somebody else that's driving. I don't have any problem at all. I also want to touch a little shading on the little part of the wrapper that's bunched around the stick. So you want to touch a little bit up against the, the round part of the sucker so up underneath the round part of the sucker on the, the paper that's under, that's a, squished around the stick. We're going to go to the sticks, and you can do all three sticks that are visible. And they are going to get a highlight lined on them. You're just going to pick up some burnt umber on your liner brush, and then pick up some yellow and kind of mi mix it a little on your palette. And you're just going to line a highlight on each stick um, on the side that faces the center. So on the big purple sucker, it's going to be on the right side of the stick. And on the yellow and purple, I mean the green and purple sucker, it's going to be on the left side of the stick. Then on the spirals themselves on this purple sucker, you just want to line a warm white 
line of highlight, a little dot in the center, um, in the upper left side on the spirals. And it's not a comma stroke or anything like that. It's just a line of warm white just to highlight those spirals a little. Now we can go back to our candy sticks. And those, um, of course, we used Irish moss already and burnt orange. I think we have all these colors out on our palette. So what we're going to do next is we're going to float burnt orange down the left side of each candy stick. So just a side load float of burnt orange down the left side. Oops, that got a little dark. It'll be okay. And I'm also going to go around this, the grape, uh, the grape, I already assigned it a flavor. The um, purple sucker. You don't want yours as white as that. Doesn't need to be. If it is, it'll be okay because it'll be just like mine. But on the left side of each of those candy suckers, just a float of burnt orange. And I'm just going to blend mine back a little bit so it's not quite so in your face. That's another nice thing about painting on fabric. And then you're going to float turquoise blue on the right side. Blend it out. You don't want it to be bright, bright blue. So blend it out quite a bit. But just a nice float of turquoise blue on the opposite side. And this is going to help. This is going to be where you separate the sticks from each other. So I'll probably go here. Luckily, I can just run right into that candy because it's already painted turquoise blue. And then I'm going to come down here and separate these two sticks from each other. And go up that right side. And then the right side of this one. And then each of those candy sticks gets a warm white highlight lined left of center. So not directly in the center, just a little left of it. And it's just a line of warm white. We're going to work on this um, yellow candy. This square candy package here. We're going to dry brush some highlighting with warm white and it's going to go across that top edge and it's going to go just wherever you can fit it in the center area. So I'm going to dry brush some warm white across this edge and then wherever I can get it in on that center area. Don't wash your brush out when we're done because we'll go ahead and do some dry brushing on another candy. And then what I want to do is I'm going to dry brush some highlighting on this blue sucker and this blue candy with warm white turquoise blue. And again, I'm going to do this. This one I'm going to do on the right side. I'm going to do that highlight. And on this candy, I'm going to do the left side. So a little bit on the end of the wrapper. And then on the right side of the, I'll call it a lollipop. How about that? And then don't wash your brush out because we'll come back and pick up more warm white and dry brush a brighter highlight. Keeping it towards the top 
of the highlight that I just added. Okay. Let's change this to that. So all of these colors we have on our palette already for this square candy thing. I just pulled my hair out. We are going to float some shading down both sides and then across the top um, of where it connects to the center square part of the candy with burnt umber. Blend it out really well. You don't want it to be real harsh burnt umber. And I'm just going to go down both sides. That's a little harsh. So I'll blend it out some more. And then turn my brush the wrong way. I'm going to go down both sides next to the candy sticks. And next to the candy. Look at that. Wipe out that edge I got. And I'm going to go down the other side. And it goes around that purple lollipop. And then you're going to go on this top edge along the bottom of that top edge. And you also want to go around the orange candy. And then when you get down here a little bit to tuck it into the pumpkin. And what I want you to do, and this isn't in the directions, I always add something, is I want you to just float a warm white highlight across that top edge. Just get some white in there and right below it. So top edge and then just drop down and add a little warm white. And it's going to get mushed up with your burnt umber, but it'll be okay. Um, there's some writing on there. And um, I just put just a few letters to give it the hint that it says candy bar. And you can wait and do this later and put a pattern on. Or you can just freehand it. But I'm just going to put a C. And I don't do highlighting or shading on this lettering. So no biggie. A. Might be a little piece of the end showing. And that's about it on candy. And then bar. You're not going to see a whole lot of bar. On the original, you see more of it. But just add some lettering to it so it's just not a big yellow blob there in the middle. So we're going to go back and work on these blue suckers and blue candy and we've already dry brushed the highlighting on it so we're going to float shading you're going to need true blue that's a color we haven't used yet and we're going to float shading on our candy with true blue and it's going to go this on the side that's opposite of where we did our highlights so on the sucker it's going to go on the left side. And I'm just going to go nice. I love this color on turquoise. In the circle of the sucker. And then you also want to go underneath the sucker part on the wrapper. Like we did on the purple one. And that candy we add those squiggly details with our pen. So on this candy, you want to go on the right side of the candy. And you're also going to go across the bottom where it tucks into the pumpkin. So right side and across the bottom. And then you're also going to float on that wrapper part above the main part of the candy. Now with your liner brush, 
and some warm white, you want to just paint a few dots onto that candy. Not the sucker, unless you want the sucker to have dots. It's your sucker. You can do whatever you like. But I'm just going to add a few polka dots with warm white on this blue candy. And it's okay. It blends into that true blue shading a little bit. That's fine. And thankfully for you, I do not shade or highlight those dots. So we are going to go to the green candy. The green candy and the sucker. And we're going to dry brush highlighting first with our yellow. I need some more yellow out. And as long as we're dry brushing yellow on the green candies, we might as well dry brush it on the orange ones also. So I'm going to dry brush across the top of that green candy, a little bit on the, the wrapper end. I'm going to go across the top of the orange candy and a little bit on the wrapper ends. Going to go in the right side of the green sucker. And this is all with your yellow. And then in the right side of the big orange sucker. It's another one of those spiral ones. So you want to do this like a big old crescent stroke. You should already have Hauser Dark Green on your palette from when we worked on something that was, oh, on the glasses. So we're going to float shading on the green candy and the green sucker with Hauser Dark Green. And I'm going to go across the bottom of this green candy. Including the wrapper. And then just tuck in a little bit more on the wrapper end. And on the green sucker, I'm going to go on the left side. And that's going to be next to the purple sucker. And the orange sucker. So the little green candy has some grape juice stripes on it. They're just little thin stripes. I do highlight them with warm white, but they're little green stripes. I mean grape juice stripes. So, but I, what I want you to do is the center one can be straight, but on either side you want to curve it so that it gives the um, impression that that's a round candy. And then you just want to pick up some warm white and line a little highlight through the center of each of those stripes. We're going to go to the orange candy and the big orange sucker. Just like we did on the uh, purple one over here, we're going to line that spiral with Irish moss. This one's going to be a little different, but you want to line that spiral in there with some thinned Irish moss. It, we're not going to add all those little stripes. So which way did I make this spiral go? Okay. I'm going to go. It's going to be kind of wide. Because what we're going to do is we're going to line another spiral inside this spiral. You're going to be really good at spirals by the time we're done. And then you want to get out some Heritage Brick, which was, uh, it's listed there, but I didn't tell you to get it out. So with Heritage Brick, you're going to line another spiral inside that green spiral. So a thin Heritage Brick in your liner brush. It's kind of just lined through the center space in between that spiral. 
that green spiral. Okay, we're going to let that dry a little bit. We'll come down here and float some shading on our orange candy with that heritage brick. It's going to be just like um, the green one. We're going to float across the bottom. That means around that green candy. And then on the wrapper next to the center of the candy. We're going to float a highlight with our yellow. It's going to go across the top of this orange candy just to make it a little more round. And then you're also going to go the right side of the big orange sucker. I needed more water in my brush. And then you're going to float Heritage Brick on the left side and next to the candy wrapper here and the purple sucker below it. So the left side gets a shading of heritage brick. One last thing to do to um, our suckers and our candies. On this sucker, we're going to just line a little highlight. Remember how we did these highlights with warm white on the spirals here? We're going to line a highlight of warm white on, um, no, a cold in the yellow. Take that back. The yellow just in the upper right side of each of those spirals. So it won't take long. Just line a little highlight here, here, on the green stripes and on the heritage brick. So I'm going to come back to these suckers and these candies. And with warm white and my liner brush, I'm just going to line a little bit more definite highlight. So I'm going to go on the blue candy on the left side. I'm just going to line a warm white highlight. On the blue sucker, I'll go on the right side. On the green candy, I'll go just across the top. On the purple sucker, I'll go on the left side. And on the green sucker, I'll go on the right side. Just to pop up that highlight and pop up the shape again. Then you can get out your stencil. And so I'm going to put this, center this on here. And then I'm going to take some painter's tape. So I'm going to center it according to the um, handles, kind of. So I'm going to just take my painter's tape and tape it down so it doesn't move around a whole lot. You want to grab yourself a stencil brush or use the brush that you um, that you um, dry brush with. That'll work too. And we're going to stencil these letters on with Irish moss. Don't take your stencil off when you're done because we're going to do some shading while it's still taped down. So I'm just going to stencil on my letters with Irish moss.
And these letters get outlined with your pen too. I'm gonna take a peek. Oh, cool. It's much easier than painting them. And so as, after you get this stenciled on with Irish moss, and while your stencil is still in place, you're going to um, stencil a little bit of Hauser dark green in the bottom half of each letter as a shadow. Okay, I'm almost done with my lettering. That was quick. And so I'm just going to, my dirty brush, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of Hauser Dark Green and just scrub a little darker color into the bottom of each letter. Just to make it look a little different. Makes it look like you took the time to really do some fancy schmancy lettering on here. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. Isn't that fancy? I love that lettering. And if you know me, whenever I stencil something, I always like to fill in those bridges. Just so it looks more like I hand painted them. So I'm just going to take my liner brush and go through and like in the top of these D's with Irish moss and the top of the O's. I'm just going to fill in that little space so it finishes the letter a little bit so it won't look like you stenciled it on so much. And when I uh, want to fill in the bottom, of course, it has a little bit of Irish uh, Hauser dark green. So you want to add a little Hauser dark green to fill in the bottoms of those O's and those D's. Otherwise, it wouldn't match real well. And then this A, you want to finish that section of that A to make it an A, an actual A. Now, um... I got a bunch of paint on uh, the edges of my uh, bag. And so I thought, well, I'll just slap some other stuff on there. So this is a completely up to you thing. Um, you can take Punchinello or another kind of stencil or a stamp and just add some different colors from your palette around the outside edge if you want to. I'm going to let mine dry and see what I decide because I did pretty good keeping the paint off the outside of it. And also, the, the last thing you do, and you should wait until your paint is dry on your fabric, is you're going to take your, uh, like a, 
a Sharpie or a, a, the small side of an Identa pen. And you're just going to outline everything and add a few details, the squiggles on this uh, blue sucker and the gathers in the end of this thing. But everything gets outlined except like his the cut edge in his eyes or the pupil or the blue stroke. You don't outline that. But you just outline the pumpkin and the glasses and um, the suckers. You outline everything, including the lettering at the top. And like I said, you want to let your, your paint dry a little bit or it'll ruin your marker. But um, don't forget to sign it. Um, I like to put a, like a kitchen towel over this when it's done and iron it with a hot iron just to kind of heat set the paint a little bit so uh, you have a completed piece if, unless you're going to add this outside stuff and the the circles I just took like a round cup that I get my salsa in and just ran it through paint and, and then stamped that on there but you can do whatever you want um, if you don't want to do anything you don't have to do anything it'll be just perfectly fine so I'm kind of liking this one without all the stuff around the outside edge so we're gonna call, we are gonna call this piece done so um thank you again for being here i appreciate it uh, i already showed you the um next um couple pieces coming up we have the um croaker jack on the uh, it's a it's a seasonal panel for the um, cell phone holder tablet stand, which I found to be really useful. We're only going to be teach uh, painting the panel, not the cell phone tablet stand. And uh, pay attention, this class is in three weeks um, because I have a trip that I'm going to be going on, and I won't be here on the fourth Sunday. So it's on June thirteenth which is a date change and then also we have our Frankenstein that is on July 25th so you get a big break from June to July you don't have to put up with me but anyway this is called good candy and the supplies for it are on my website I'm waiting on one stencil but it's a star stencil if you have one at home it's perfectly good. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me again. I appreciate it.